All right, welcome back to Flock of Socks, the podcast, episode 203. Today on the show, we found an old clip of Mark Cuban, and wait till you hear what he said about Trump before his mind virus took over. Then we have more unhinged women for Kamala. We're going to explain why they're so far removed from reality. Then, as we all know, DEI is very costly. Wait till you hear the dollar amount it costs you. And last but not least in Cringe of the Week, this child murderer is trans and making insane demands from prison, and the state is listening. All this and more, it's Fluckus Talks, a podcast, episode 203, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words, but at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. It's the podcast featuring Richard Grab Richard. All right, one for one on the intro, as always. Guys, we live in a society that's constantly uncomfortable, irritated, and on the edge. Everything costs more, and you're getting less and less for your money. Thankfully, there are companies like Undertack providing exceptional quality men's basics for your hard-earned dollar. Their socks are made of battle weave wool, which is five times stronger than merino. Their ring-spun cotton hoodies and joggers are dangerously comfortable, and every Patriot needs the EDC t-shirt three-pack. Undertack isn't your typical men's boxers. They're made with Modal, which is 50% more moisture wicking than cotton. It's antibacterial and way softer. Plus, now they have women's Undertack shorts for the tactical lady in your life. Go to Undertack.com. That's Undertack.com, U-N-D-E-R-T-A-C.com, and get 20% off site-wide when you use my code FLECUS20 at checkout. With Undertack, you'll get exceptional comfort, twice the guarantee, and a fraction of the price compared to competitors. And best part, they donate a portion of their profits to organizations that are actively fighting against human trafficking. Stock up today. Undertack.com is the website. Go there now. Use code FLECUS20 at checkout. It's linked in the description. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to Undertack for sponsoring. Thank you, Undertack. It's very important to get your necessities. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. Thanks. And they have such uh, comfortable stuff. We really do wear their stuff every week, and it's so comfortable. Yeah. It's good lounging wear, too. All right. You lounge in your underwear? Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right. We have, uh, before we get to the show, we have uh, a hurricane coming? A hurricane bearing down on our location. So there is a small chance that uh, we won't be here come Friday, right? Yeah. I yeah. think we're, we're going to be fine. Usually, we kind of have the hurricane luck, where it just veers off left at the last minute. Or it just rains for 40 minutes and then go, oh, I guess it's not a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> That's what always seems to happen. That tends to happen a lot. But then again, there's like, a, it's kind of like an STP meter where when you start taking it really for granted, then you have to go all the way back to high alert, right? That's a good point. So. Flooding, yeah. So Herman Cain's coming. Herman Cain? Yeah, that's who it's named after. And Herman that's the Cain. same as Ben Carson? Similar. Similar. Yeah. I zip filed those two as the same guy. Yeah. And you're doing these bits and now he's going to kill like 600 and like cause <laughs> flooding and 3 billion in damages. And like no one took it seriously. Yeah. We, if you're in Florida, you got to get out. Yeah. So we're not in trouble. Uh, Ron DeSantis already put a, a state of emergency or something on all these counties. And he, he kind of did it for too many counties. So now I'm like, well, some of us are going to be safe, right? I don't believe in it. Yeah. Yeah. They did. What did they got? Uh, Fort Myers last time. That was a real one. Yeah, that was real. I know a show watcher who got their house totally like blown and up. That was like a year ago. Okay, yeah. so maybe it could be real. Small chance you don't see us Friday. All right, we get into the show now. Okay. <laughs> First clip. Uh, this one really blew my mind. We found a Patrick Bet David interview with Mark Cuban and a bunch of other people. We have like a little montage here of like a minute of Mark Cuban before his mind virus got completely out of hand. Would you be comfortable with a capitalist like Donald Trump being our president? Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I like Donald and he's smart. And do I think he's smart enough to figure that out and then just do the right thing after he's elected? Yes. You said, you know, Trump, I get it. He's changing the tone of politics. The beauty of what he's doing 
isn't his policy or his positions, but he's making everybody else become more real. He's making them more honest. They're not as scripted. And I think that's good for politics. You have a long history with Donald Trump. That's my right? boy. Yeah. Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. Here's what I do respect about Donald. I'm not saying vote for him, right? But there's something I do respect about him. Donald says what's on his mind. Probably the best thing to happen to politics in a long, long time, yep. you said. Would you be Donald Trump's VP? I'm just yeah. going to jump right in. Sure. I, I'd be VP for either candidate. You know, I agree with him. I, I like what he's doing from that perspective. Um, and we'll see what he does on the personal side. But he's obviously... Interesting. And that went all the way into 2017, Trump's first term, first year in office. Yeah, that was 2015, all the way from when he announces he's running, 2016 when he wins, to 2017 when he's governing. Yeah, so he was operating as a rational businessman. That's what it seems like to me. He was more focused on numbers and like being an anti-political type. It wasn't necessarily super details oriented, right? Yeah, and then exactly. And then he was doing common sense. I'm a businessman, economy. And then all of a sudden he just went off the rails and became like hyper emotional and like Donald Trump is evil and he's trying to like scare everyone. I don't know, did George Floyd do this? I think so. That's one of our theses mm -hmm. um, that 2020 just fried his brain. You know, all the NBA players, I mean, he's an owner of the Mavs or is and kind of was and sold a huge stake. But being around all those guys who are kneeling and wearing shirts and telling you to say Breonna Taylor's name and stuff, that's kind of a struggle session with a guy like Mark Cuban. Yeah, that got to him. So it's either that or some really substantial blackmail around 2018, 2019 so came out. When you have these clips, the graph for the chances that Mark Cuban is being aggressively blackmailed, yeah, the graph goes like that. It's not fact, but the odds on that blackmail existing, they're skyrocketing. <laughs> it's an easy trade. But yeah, it's so weird. And that that's kind of what you do if you're like a billionaire businessman. I'm on Shark Tank, right? Like, and... He's on Shark Tank. Trump was doing The Apprentice. They're kind of similar archetypes, like low billionaires. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, Not mm -hmm. like uh, Facebook 200 billion type. So th they have a lot in common. And he just went uh, fried brain out of yeah. nowhere, right? Big time. Well, let's get into the show. Let's, let's get come. into the political section of the show. Uh, Ryan Ruth, the attempted Trump assassin who was hiding in the bushes at the golf course waiting for Trump to come. Uh, they just released a letter that he wrote, I guess, assuming he would get caught. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so they released it. It's all over the place. And in the letter, it says, if you get the job done and off Trump, he'll you'll get $150,000. Yeah. Uh, and he, the first sentence is, this was an assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Yeah. And as we've covered, he they, they've only made gun charges on him thus far. So we'll see if that gets uh, escalated. And yeah, 150 get K that he almost certainly doesn't have. Yeah. I think he's got like no money and like a single thousand dollar pickup truck in Hawaii to his name. So it's a bluff. He's hoping someone does the job and then he can renege on it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he's a maniac, right? Major maniac. And usually when there's like a mass shooter or an assassin and there's like a manifesto, they don't release it because they don't want to inspire copycats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this one they released, and in it there is a cash reward for someone who does it. So yeah. it was a little peek behind the curtain. Yeah, I guess. the trans shooter in Nashville. Whoa, we can't show you that. She's too much of a leftist in all of her uh, very basic writings. Uh, but this guy, cash you know, reward, cash reward. Let's let's just publish that real quick. Exactly, which is crazy. And we also have some new uh, weird facts about the guy that was uh, posted. Can you read those? Uh, this is the stuff that was found in the Nissan that Ruth was driving. Two license plates, six cell phones, one with search of how to get to Mexico, twelve pairs of gloves, Hawaii driver's license and passport, handwritten list of dates in August, September, and October of venues for Trump events. Interesting. So kind a lot of, of those, kind of a Jason Bourne type, you know, yeah. a bunch of gloves, different license plates, switching off. But he was just the retarded version of Jason Bourne instead. Yeah, never exactly. got a shot off. Never got a shot off. And then uh, the Trump events and venues, mm -hmm. interesting. The odds that he's like an inside operator are kind of going up as well, or at least tipped off by an inside operator, right? Yeah, tipped off is kind of what I'm seeing. But luckily, Trump has Secret Service. Yeah, <laughs> we have an update from Secret Service. <laughs> Breaking: A U.S. Secret Service agent negligently discharged his weapon and shot himself while on duty Saturday evening. I'm, su I'm assuming this is DEI related. Could be. We don't know. It's a man. So uh, it's a guy. It says his for pronouns, but it could be trans. <laughs> could be trans. <laughs> it's be not trans. one of the pregnant officers, which is good. Mm -hmm. But one of these issues, uh, something like this, a negligent desk pop, uh, as it were, 
you might get actually promoted to Trump's inner circle after something like this. They might <laughs> this say, guy's got no clue what he's doing. <laughs> Send him out front. Get him on Trump. There's not a $150,000 reward on him, is he? Is there? Yeah, exactly. All right, well, let's check in on Grandpa Joe, who's still running the country. He did an event, I believe, in Japan or with Japanese delegates and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a little clip from it. So I want to thank you all for being here. And now, uh, who am I introducing next? Who's next? Distinguished guests, the Prime Minister of the Republic of India. By the way, mm. who's next? That's called a dementia snap. Yeah, that's a dementia snap. That's the same energy as when you go to your grandpa's house and he's got scrapes along the side of his car. Mm. And you say, Grandpa, no more driving. And then he snaps and gets mad and you go, oh, whatever, we'll try again next month. Mm -hmm. Same energy Defensive, there. Defensive, snapping, forgetfulness, and then they're angry out of the forgetfulness. I'm fine. I can yeah. drive fine. Exactly. Yeah. So it, he's still cooked, as we all know. And in, also, as we all know, once you're cooked, you can't get uncooked. Yeah, You course. only get more and more cooked. Mm -hmm. So he's on the road to full, fully done. Yeah. He's well going to. And I mean, it's very fascinating to me how little he's done in terms of helping Kamala. They almost are completely sign-lighting him on purpose, like as if they don't want them tied together at all. Uh, him being out of the media spotlight and stuff, they really just want you to forget about him uh, and completely focus on as if Kamala is the only person who's ever been running, right? Yeah, that's a good point. And it's crazy how they're able to hide him so much when he was so front and center every single thing, every single day he had to do. It must be a huge relief Yeah, if you were on the, the Joe Biden team. The covering kinda. media <laughs> side of it, yeah. yeah it's probably your job got way easier once he stopped doing it. Absolutely. All right, well, let's get into the Kamala stuff. We have a big Kamala section, as you guys can imagine. I saw this tweet. That really made me wonder. Basically, it's talking about Kamala as a prosecutor. Remember, she was a prosecutor in California. They bill her as a prosecutor a That's lot. That's like her big thing. Oh, trans international criminals or whatever. Yeah. Uh, can you read what this tweet says? It says, it's been several weeks and still no Democrat or member of the press has taken up my challenge of posting a transcript of a case that Kamala Harris has prosecuted. I actually asked for the most complex prosecution she's ever done. But at this point, I'll settle for a transcript of any case she's ever prosecuted. I'm starting to get doubtful that she ever prosecuted a case through to trial. In any event, calling her a prosecutor as opposed to a paper pusher is starting to look like a huge exaggeration. That's a good point because everyone says, oh, she's a big prosecutor or whatever. I think she's too stupid to do that. Yeah. And you know how she is on her feet. You know how she's not that smart. She's not that good at like regurgitating information. How could you ever prosecute like a case in court to a judge in front of people? Like she would just be awkward and laugh about it. Yeah. And I mean, we just saw this tweet, so we're not making any suggestions, but it's weird. Somebody should be jumping all over this, right? Like, oh, here's her in court uh, prosecuting this guy or here's a transcript of her biggest case. It sounds like she was basically a paper pusher doing a lot of plea deals for the Democrat, uh, you know. Uh, DA's office. Yeah, and that sounds about right. And then I don't want to get schizo this early in the show. We actually have a section later in housekeeping. But wasn't she the DA in California while P. Diddy was doing a lot of his Diddy parties? Uh, yeah, but I don't know if they overlapped or not. They probably. I think they did. Okay. You in know? San Francisco? Diddy, I thought Diddy was L.A., right? Yeah, but wasn't she a prosecutor for the whole state? This. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she might have been uh, state's attorney general, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So... I don't know. Yeah, maybe so. some, maybe there's some uh, complicity in there. I'm hearing rumors of a tape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a video tape. No, I'm people, just kidding. Are, people are talking about a tape, and it's like, all right, uh, probably not that far. Yeah. But she may have been complicit in not charging people. Yeah. Uh, she gave a speech over the weekend or Friday uh, in Georgia. Listen to how she sounds. On the other side of my, you know, the 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 the, the, the other folks, the, Trump and his running mate. And they'll talk about, oh, well, yeah, but I, you know, I, I, I do believe in the exception to save the mother's life. Okay. All right, let's break that down, shall we? Let's break that down. Mm. Let's break that so down. So she's slurring. She's got the changes in volume. You know, uh, September 20th was a Friday. 
Yeah. People like to drink on Fridays. This is around three o'clock on Friday, like you afternoon. You start the weekend early. Mm -hmm. um, and then also at the end, she goes, let's break that down as if like getting into the nitty gritty details is her strong suit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're the last person who should be saying, let's break anything down. Yeah. She's a broad strokes, uh, you know, slogans type. She's not a details oriented type, which is the same reason we don't really have any prosecution transcripts. Exactly. And obviously we can't deal with another four years of this. And you know who agrees with us? Tim Waltz. He said the same exact thing. We can't afford. We can't afford four more years of this. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Tim. Timmy. I don't think you're supposed to say that. Yeah. But it's true. Uh, things are obviously really bad. People do feel the same way. There's a huge difference between the current administration and Trump. Everyone kind of can feel it and knows it, even though they go on TV and say crime's down and prices are, are lower than they were. Everyone goes, nah, there's crime every day I'm seeing and everything's more expensive. What are you talking about? Yeah, we're getting into a new weird world where uh, nobody trusts the talking head or the data. Like everything's manipulated and it's like anecdotal evidence is king now. Like talking to your neighbors about something and being like, oh, wow, that happened. Oh, geez. Your insurance went up too. I saw a lady get carjacked last week. A couple of your Car cats are missing. <laughs> Carjackings are up. Yeah. They're eating the pets. I know. It's, <laughs> it's all it's, anecdotal, but that's the truest. It's kind of, it kind of is when you start looking at a lot of the data and stuff and and, uh, you know, like the jobs number, for example, is one of the big ones we've been harping on, like job numbers, it's revised down and then it's all foreign born and part time workers. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, that's three legs. Jobs are up. Yeah. <laughs> but minus those other things. Exactly. No, don't, don't need to bore you with the details. Um, and then there was a Kamala word salad on Oprah. People uh, did like a zoom in and asked a question for specifics, like how are we going to fix the economy? Mm -hmm. uh, and listen to the word salad she gave. Really would love to know what your plan is to help lower the cost of living. Yeah. I, first of all, thank you both for being here. And yours is a, a story I hear around the country as I travel. And um, in terms of both rightly having the right to have aspirations and dreams and ambitions for your family and working hard and finding that the American dream is for this generation and so many recently far more elusive than it's been. And we need to deal with that. And there are a number of ways. One is bringing down the cost of everyday necessities, including groceries. Hmm. So the question was specifically what your plan is to, uh, to lower the cost of living. Mm -hmm. And then she does not says nothing. And at the end says, we need to do things like lower the cost of living and groceries. Yeah. She tells you the result. She doesn't tell you how she's going to get there after like a 30 second word salad where she preambles it and says like, Oh, a lot of people are saying this and, but groceries need to go down. It's like, yeah, how, what is the way to do that? That what? was the question we asked. Mm -hmm. And you just said, yeah, got to go down. Got to go down. And then you, that lady was like nodding her head. Yeah. And then the husband's there. And I don't know. I don't want to. I was going to say. Like, slander him. You don't want to slander I don't the husband. slander the guy. <laughs> but there's something to be said about guys who listen to their wife too much. Yeah. I, 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 there was an extended version of this clip where it was more of her asking the question. And the guy just sat there the whole time nodding. So it was not his turn to speak. There's some, yeah, exactly. She's, I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's something there too. I was going to, I don't want to be rude, but I was going to say like, if you're a guy voting for Kamala, you're either gay or retarded. Yeah, that's fair. That's not rude at all. That's all normal. Right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Got the point across without having to say it directly. Yep. Um, so obviously the word salads and the, the, the weird track record yeah. for Kamala isn't going to stop any of the celebrities from falling in line and doing what they're told. Ben Stiller, he was really big supporter at the convention, mm -hmm. and he's still doing his round on the shows. Uh, I believe this was earlier in the episode with Oprah. Listen to what he says as why uh, he's voting for Kamala. From a, a stop Trump mode into a go Kamala mode, the people starting to you know yeah. really hear what she's yeah. about. And um, you know, I have a I have a 22 year old daughter, 19 year old son is going to be voting in his first election. My daughter's, you know, her reproductive rights are incredibly important. Um, you know, uh, standing up for. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. And I think standing up for. Yeah. 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 I think I think what Chris said. We're ready to turn the page. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oprah kind of cut him off there. She did. And then Ben Stiller cares about voting for Kamala because his. 
daughter needs to be able to kill his grandchild. I really want my daughter to kill it. There's a demon in him. I want my daughter to kill it. And he's like jumping out of the screen. It's like, what? Like, Calm down, Ben. Ben. <laughs> She's not even pregnant. Yeah. But like, why? I don't understand why that's like their number one thing. And then everyone is obviously leaning into the idea that abortion's on the ballot. Mm -hmm. When it's already gone back to the States and Roe v. Wade's overturned. It's not on the ballot so at all. It's not on the ballot at all. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest things. The drunk Kamala clip that we showed earlier from her in Atlanta. Basically, that whole speech was about abortion. And so abortion's not really on the ballot unless they're trying, unless Kamala's going to promise to stuff the Supreme Court or something, something kind of unconstitutional. It's not on the ballot and it's already back to the states. But it's the number one thing women, celebrities, Kamala is talking about. And then when it comes to cost of living and the economy, which or like the border, which are true issues that are kind of tangible, ongoing, affecting everyday Americans, it's word salad and groceries should go down. Yeah. Or it's, we're already stopping the people at the border. Yeah, well, there's 20 million here, right? Oh, but we don't count them as coming across. They, they're those are refugees. But it doesn't matter for them because for top issues for young voters, they still think abortion's on the ballot. The young women still think abortion's on the ballot. Yeah, we right? actually have a graph here. Top issue for young voters for economy, that's young men's number one issue. Mm -hmm. And then for young women, their number one issue is abortion. By a lot. So the economy for young men and then the ability to kill your children for women. And it's not even kill your children. It's kill your children more conveniently because the way it is now goes back to the state. So if you live in Alabama and Alabama is no abortion state, you might need to go to Florida or I mean, you know, go to Georgia or go to California. And it's not convenient enough to kill your own kid. Yeah. There's 0% chance uh, abortion will be federally codified into law by either party. It, nobody's gaining power either way, right? Yeah. Like there's not going to, even if Democrats won in kind of a landslide, they wouldn't be able to get it done either. Yeah. That's very strange. So it's a fascinating dilemma here where nobody really knows like the things you're tangibly voting on, the economy, immigration, things like that, uh, that can actually, something can be done about. Those are like thrown to the wayside by young women. Exactly. And then like this whole situation we're in is like, it contradicts itself because young women are really caring about abortion. And then instead of being like, okay, how many abortions are done? They always say rape and incest, you yeah. know? And that's obviously such a small percentage of abortion, but they lean into that and they lead with that. So like, oh, a victim of rape needs to carry a child all the way to birth. And then at the same time, they're also advocating for illegal third worlders to come here who mm. do more raping than anybody. So at one hand, you're saying, oh, rape victims are not being honored with this abortion ban that doesn't exist. And then on the other hand, you're saying we need to bring in third worlders who don't have our cultural views and are more likely to do raping. And both issues, and thats it's funny to us watching that and being like, huh, that doesn't make sense. But both issues to them are purely emotional. I need to have my rights, and then the everybody deserves a better life or the best possible life, right? Mm -hmm. And there's no thought to like the current citizens of America. It's just two emotional appeals, and then never the twain shall meet, right? Yeah. They don't actually point. interact at all. Which is weird. Um, and then before we move on uh, from Ben Stiller, did Ben Stiller go to a P. Diddy party? What happened to Ben Stiller? Where's he? Where's the tape? Show us the tape. Because he was in that movie where he spent the night in the museum. Oh. And he was like hanging out with Teddy Roosevelt. And mm -hmm. he was kind of doing America shit. Yeah. And who that, else was there, Ben? Who else was there? What happened when the lights went out at the night at the museum? <laughs> yeah. Oh. In that movie where he spent the night at the museum. It's so weird, though. Like, as a dad, my daughter's reproductive rights. And it's like, euphemism, euphemism. My daughter needs to kill. Sick. My son wants to kill, too, but his girlfriends. <laughs> it you know? really is. Like, if you, if, you, if you zoomed out and looked at it from, like, a real outsider perspective of what they're saying, mm -hmm. it's very, very sick. And it's actually very much in the open and satanic. And then nothing can be done. Nothing's happening. Roe v. Wade is overturned. You can't pack the Supreme Court. Like, that's – I could yell it from the rooftops. Like, Ben, nothing's going to happen. Trump has even said he's not doing anything at the federal level for mm -hmm. abortion, which – uh, is much to the ire of some people on the right wing, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they need to pretend it is because their voting base doesn't know anything. Yeah. So Kamala never prosecuted, not, never prosecuted a case. She's drunk as fuck. She's talking about abortion. She can't answer uh, anything about the economy, right? But God made the prices go down. Yeah. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Well, quick graph here: global ver uh, fertility. Um, and this is the global fertility rate. As you can see, all of the third world countries, India, Africa, 
Um, all those countries have a ton of kids. Yeah. Not everyone else has like one to 1.9. America, the best country, one to 1.9 kid each. Doesn't make sense. Not good. And mm-hmm. that kind of gives you a little hint at what's coming, you know? Um, so who is supporting Kamala? Obviously, a lot of the people are unhinged white women obsessed with killing their babies. Yeah. And we actually have a clip of one here. Oprah and Kamala have me crying. It's like the nostalgia of Oprah in the 90s after high school, but like with the hope of today with Kamala and, and there's a Swifty right behind him. I love it so much. Crying, manic unhinged talking about oprah taylor swift and kamala yeah when the 39 year old crying woman hits you with that ssri stare yeah you just don't know what to do with it just fully cooked off of ssris and birth control i don't that's the foundation of kamala's voting block i would say that's like a big chunk Mm -hmm. um and they're voting against their own best interest we actually have a quick graph here of mental health based on political party blue is women red is men the left is the left the far right's the right and you can see the the women in the far left category are the most mentally unwell. Mm-hmm. It's, it's ugly. Odd. It's not even it's not even hard science. It's <laughs> just know. a pretty simple graph. And I'm sure most of you could have vibed that out. Yeah, you don't even have to. And what is that? Causation or correlation? I don't know. You be the judge, right? Yeah, exactly. And then like some people wonder, and I want to take a little wider perspective here: why this is happening? Why are women voting against their own best interest? Why are women's views in society, especially on the left, kind of like this weird, not make sense category of thinkers? Yeah. Uh, There's actually a tweet that summed it up pretty good. And it's like the current state of like leftist women. Uh, It says in woke culture, anything a woman does must be affirmed by all men. Otherwise, she goes berserk and the woke mob may choose the offending male as its next target. Continuous, unconditional male affirmation lets woke women wander far away from the break, uh, bracing ice water of reality. That's it. Yeah. So you can't really, you can't get in a woman's way when she's saying what she's saying and then not getting in a woman's way. She'll just keep going away from reality. And then the things she cares about or votes about has nothing to do with like furthering the better good of society. Yeah. It's all like emotional things. People need to come here for a better life. I need to be able to kill my kids. And it's like, whoa, but there's no whoa. It's another, yeah, No, a lot of people don't even do the whoa. Um, I'll fucking divorce you if you hit me with a whoa, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and it's another case of that too far from where the food's made, right? Like they're so far away from like reality or what makes a great nation that they're just screeching about their personal rights to kill a baby, right? Yeah, and then what happens, like what would bring a person back to reality? You get punched in the face by someone from Somalia Yeah, in midtown Manhattan. Yeah. And then the guy doesn't go to jail and the cops come an hour later and you're going like this with like a bruised face Mm -hmm. and they go, oh, where'd he go? What happened? All right. We'll make a report. And that's it. So maybe that will teach people. Um, There's a lady who posted a video about uh, people in her town being paid to be Kamala supporters. So besides Kamala's base being like SSRI birth control women with dead eyes, it's also people being paid to be there. My nail tech, I've been going there for 15 years, so they're like family to me. But they said that their one cousin is in South Philly, and listen to this. She's getting paid $700 a week to go to wherever Kamala's um, campaign tells them to go to. So it's $100 a day, $700 a week. And she's not even a citizen. She can't vote, but she wants that extra money, so that's what why she's doing it. So... Their campaign is getting a bunch of people. That's why you see these people on the side of the roads with with signs or whatever, going to these protests. They get travel paid for and everything, and they're not even able to vote. So, hmm. yeah, that makes sense. That's why people go there and hold signs up. Some are just stupid. Others are literally being paid. It's their it's their day work. And someone from NBC will fact check this and be like, no, that's not true. And I'm like over here chilling, just like, yeah, anecdotal evidence. Sounds good. Yeah. Rings true. I trust that. Some lady in a car talking about her nail tech. Why would the nail tech lie? That's me, (laughs) you know? True. And if you, honestly, that's how a lot of stuff goes. And I think our batting record is pretty good. Like our batting average, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Like we can vibe it out. And I hear that. That's true. Yeah. Even though I'm not, I don't know who that lady is. I don't know what her intentions are. I don't know what the nail tech, the nail tech's cousin. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's it. It just vibes. <laughs> it sounds right. 
It does vibe. It does sound right. And that's why your discernment needs to be sharp these days. Mm. Um, all right. Let's get into some illegal immigration. We're not doing a full migrant section today just because it's too depressing. Yeah. We'll cover it in bonus land. We have a great migrant section coming in bonus land. Flagustalks.com. 30-minute extra show. Uh, go sign up. Link is in the description. But let's do a little migrant stuff. Can you read these tweets? Yeah, this is a tweet that really offended me and uh, a lot of people, you know, kind of just this attitude that a lot of people have, hipsters in urban America. This is the male counterpart to the female screeching about abortion, right? This guy says, I straight up do not care about illegal immigration, and it's weird that people do. Mm. And it had 207,000 likes at the time of this screenshot, so a lot of the hipsters really agree with him, right? I just straight up don't care. Uh, dump unlimited Haitians in my backyard, bro. I'm chill about it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another tweet. I'm, I might as well read this quote tweet that kind of is going to spark our discussion. But it says, it's weird to care who moves into your country is one of the most unhinged, insane, violent, hateful, and dangerous takes of all time. Who cares who your neighbors are, bro? Humans are identical, interchangeable production units. It's wrong to have preferences demonic. Mm. And I just want to talk about the, how it's violent, hateful, and dangerous as a take, right? So th there's one thing to uh, kind of have views and then those views turn into actions, right? Where it's like, oh, I hate this ethnic group or I hate X, Y, Z, or we're going to round them up and go into camps. And it's like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> Can't do that uh, unless they're illegal, then you totally can. The constitution doesn't apply to illegals, right? Um, but there's this kind of other thing, which we were talking about off the show, which is like hate or violence or whatever by omission, where it's like some hipster doofus going, I don't care, bring as, as many people as you want. And then those people cause pain and suffering or like uh, commit crimes, petty or uh, severe crimes in New York City. They can't get jobs. They can't work. There's no resources. So it becomes like a bottleneck. They drive wages down. They drive home prices up. And it's like tons of these ripple effects from like dropping a stone in the water, right? And it's not like you did anything. You just didn't care, right? Mm -hmm. I just didn't have an opinion. I said whatever, you know, stuff them with Democrat voters, stuff my, the country. My neighbor's undocumented and he wakes up at 4 a.m. to go work at the bagel store. Yeah. And they have their own anecdotal that like does it in a bad way. Exactly. And so uh, that sort of like violence or uh, – Evil by omission is sometimes just as bad as evil by, like, action, you know? Big time. So I just wanted to say that, make that point. Um, and the action know. people take action because there's a large enough group of people that do the omission. So that's, then yeah. that's what they take advantage of, where it's like, well, people just want to come for a good life, and I'm not a racist Republican. And they go, yeah, 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 let us uh, bring these Ill illegals in. And also the idea that which you mentioned in that second tweet about how people, uh, the Democrats think that people are inter interchangeable yeah. and they're all the same person. I was kind of thinking deeper into that. You know how societies throughout history have like natural caste systems? Yeah. Like in India, they have like an official one with yeah. like names. And sometimes it's just like upper class, middle class, lower class. I think that was like a natural way that people were sorted. And then the bad guys convinced the middle people that the lower people were only on the bottom because of racism and white supremacy. And now we need to flood this racist, white supremacist, colonizing country with all the lower people. And then, and then the people in the middle, like that guy, are like, yeah, like we, let's, let's let everyone in. Who cares? And we're actually going to get a taste of uh, an ugly bottom of the barrel world because our natural caste system is getting flipped up on its head. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then that goes to say, like, I mean, for some of those caste system things, like, w w did it start for nothing? And that's not, <laughs> yeah, you there, you down, you small. Um, <laughs> and that's not to say someone from, like, a low caste couldn't have, like, a huge IQ and go be a computer engineer. You know, obviously there are exceptions to that. But makes you wonder what happened at the first place in India. Yeah, the, it's exactly. And it's like, oh, caste systems can be kind of harsh, but I think no caste system is actually way worse. I've actually heard, uh, anecdotal again, guys, uh, but some of the migrants, you know how uh, Canada is dealing with a huge influx of Indian migrants. I've heard that some of them are leaving trash around and like that's a big complaint is like the parks are all thrown out with trash. And some of them are doing it because they see people who are in lower castes than them. And then they're supposed to pick up the trash. 
So they don't do it. Anecdotal again. Anecdotal again. And then we actually do have a clip of a Canadian immigrant complaining about the Indians in yeah. Canada. So that hipster doofus doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit about immigration at all. But here's the thoughts of someone who actually just got to Canada. Any words for anybody out there that might be watching this? What would it be? We need to do something about these Indians. It's, is it like different ethnicities? Huh? Di like all immigrants? Not all immigrants. Okay. They are majority. Were you an immigrant as well? Yes, I am. Okay, where are you, where are you from? St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Oh. I came here without paper just like them, but it wasn't like this. Yeah. You have to behave yourself. If you don't behave yourself, they send you back. But there they you go. So this is a woman who is a one-year migrant, uh, and she's already hating on the class of 2024 one year after. Yeah. Because they're that bad, apparently. Yeah. I believe are. her. I believe her, too. But the hipster doofus on Twitter from uh, who, who lives in a brick loft somewhere, he straight up does not care. Doesn't right? care. Until what happens? No. Until everything's too late. And then we're going to go back to him and go, hey, you said this was okay. The whole world's trash. What are we going to do? And then he was just a pussy the whole time. Yeah. And he might win in the short term. And they... They are, right? Uh, they're dumping these people into uh, the heartland of America. But winning versus being right, I don't think he's going to uh, – when when he's an elderly man and he's like, well, I didn't care for so long, and then some Somali wants to play the knockout game with him without his consent on the streets of New York or wherever he lives, uh, he's going to have a high dental bill. Exactly. I thought. That's how it's going to go. All right, which takes us to our Diddy section, allegedly. Yeah, this whole thing is going to be allegedly. Diddy oh. is in prison right now. Diddy's in prison. He's got no bail. No bail. They're holding so him until the end of trial. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, okay, so this whole Diddy section is allegedly. I'm going to cook a little bit. RRB probably doesn't fully agree with everything I'm saying, or you know, maybe you haven't seen yeah, yeah. it yet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so whatever this is, is a full fleck is cook. But celebrities who are tight with Diddy have been deleting their social media. Notable people, Megan Fox, Pink, and Usher so far. And then Usher played it off like, yo, I, I was hacked, y'all. See y'all tonight at the concert. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Usher. And here we go. Keep in mind, remember Stephen Baldwin a few weeks ago was saying, like, it's calm before the storm. The storm's coming. Like, there's going to be massive storm, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he was on some schizo shit. He was on some schizo shit. But then Diddy gets arrested, and now we're into this trial. Keep in mind, Stephen Baldwin is the father of Haley Baldwin. Who's married to Justin Bieber. Who's married to Justin Bieber. It's all about Justin Bieber, allegedly. Okay. So what I think happened was, allegedly, Justin Bieber was abused by, as a teenager okay. by Diddy, allegedly, uh, and a bunch of other people. And they were in on it. They all knew about it. Um, and we're going to show a clip here. This is Pink, who deleted her social media. This is how she was treating Justin Bieber at an award show. I feel violated right now. So she's kissing on him, and it's really weird. Allegedly, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's on video. <laughs> That's on good. video. You're good on that one. Um, and then Usher was Justin Bieber's mentor. Yeah. Who allegedly turned him over to Diddy. Ooh, allegedly. So that's where it gets ugly there, right? Okay. And then we have Megan Fox, who is involved. I don't know exactly how she's involved, but she deleted her social media Okay. And also, as we know, all three of Megan Fox's sons are trans. Whoa. So when you participate in satanic black sex magic. Allegedly. Allegedly. It probably affects other part of your life when you allow a demon into your life. For sure. And then we get into SNL. SNL did a skit where Obama is kissing Justin Bieber. This has been deleted off of everything. We have the clip. Okay, all right. <laughs> so that's a weird clip. Yeah. And SNL does have people who know stuff and are on the inside. And they'll often allude to things like satanic rituals or sacrifices. Like they've alluded to it in the past. Okay. And that one is alluding to Obama kissing Justin Bieber, which you don't need, you know, you don't have to extrapolate all the way. Maybe it's just a random thing. But then you play this interview with John Legend and Chrissy Teigen talking about their weird sexcapades and listen what they said. The worst. <laughs> what do you do? The best. Okay, the best. Okay. Um, 
probably the Obama thing. What? <laughs> John, what's the? Oh Obama God! What, oh God! John, John, what? What? What is? What is your wife talking about? I don't know. We heard Obama in there. <laughs> Could you get back in? Uh, what happened? We're not going to discuss that. We're not going to discuss it. We're not. We're wow. not. Right, okay. Oh my God! <laughs> Secret Service. Come here, jump back in. Hi. Look at John. Look at I don't. Hi. <laughs> We're not talking about it. <laughs> That's. So they're alluding to some weird Obama thing, sex party thing. And then Chrissy Teigen and John Legend, he's doing the, you know what, the Maxine uh, ads. Yeah, he's a big ex uh, big Maxine salesman now. So they're making him do stuff. And it's just weird. And I, we're not going to draw any conclusions, but those two are people that you would think were in on it. Mm. People already have that opinion that John Legend and Chrissy Teigen are in on it. And then they do that. Yeah. So Diddy stuff's obviously unfolding. That's where my initial uh, read is, and that's what I'm going to when I'm thinking about connecting the dots myself. Okay, yeah. You're, All not, right. you're not that far outside of uh, schizo right-wing Twitter and everything. I mean, people are obviously connecting the dots, and there's... I mean, Justin Bieber is the, the one that it all is around. There's a lot of sexual abuse going on. Yeah. Is what it, behind closed doors, powerful places. And, yeah. Uh, Everything's a sex cult. Everybody jokes about it. And everybody has like some reference or something. <laughs> my, my, the funniest thing though is for sure there are some people who just went to like P. Diddy's Labor Day party where it yeah, wasn't the yeah. sex thing. And then they're on camera being like, oh, that P. Diddy party was sick. And then it's like people on the right calling them or people anywhere uh, in conspiracy Twitter calling them like there's a pedophile or something. Big time. It's, uh, it, it's not necessarily everybody, but there is a lot of sex crime. All right, moving on to the page of housekeeping I want to talk about. Make sure you, before we get there, you guys use this opportunity to help us juice the algo, leave a like, leave a comment, tickle the post, notifications, P.O. Box. Okay, yeah, I was fast. <laughs> Are you in a rush? I expedited it. All right. Um, my pillow is uh, very much on sale. The prices were slashed from $50 to $30, all the way to $14.88. So it looks like Mike Lindell is uh, trying to secure the existence of a good night's sleep and a future for comfortable pillows. Yeah, <laughs> he certainly did. That's a strange number there from Mike Lindell. Uh, I was going to say, like, you're blackpilling? Mike Lindell's 1488 <laughs> posting and you're blackpilling? <laughs> I don't know what this is. What do you think? Is it? Do you think he uh, he knew about it and then, like, did it so that people would talk about it and it's free extra marketing or what? Or do you think it was a pure accident? I I don't want to give any motives, but I think he did it so he gets written up so they could say Mike Lindell's doing a Nazi dog whistle 1488 posting, and he'll go, "What are you talking about?" And he'll You're gaslight. crazy, yeah. my, but my so are my prices. And then people are gonna go, "Oh man, they're coming after Mike Lindell again." I'm gonna go buy a couple of my pillows because they're so cheap. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. Limit it's, ten per order. Yeah, he's giving them an excuse to write him up. It's going to sound unhinged and conspiratorial, like he's a secret Nazi or something. And then normal people on the right wing are going to go, ah, they're coming after Mike Lindell again. I can get five pillows for 15 bucks each. I think that's pretty much it. Smart and fair. All right, last thing of the whole housekeeping. I have a question. This is actually serious. Okay. Um, a lot read. of times there's, there's experts in the chat. Uh, whenever we talk about something, there's people that actually have really smart insight. So I have a question. As you guys know, I'm a dog owner. Jerry the Rottweiler is a great guy. Um, let me know in the comments if you have some insight on this, because uh, I'm like a fairly new dog owner. Um, but if I'm sitting on the couch with Jerry, right, and we're sitting, say, like butt to butt, rear to rear, is there a world where if we're lying down like that, Jerry could in any way fart worms into my butt? I started reading it before you said it. Yeah, hopefully there's an expert who can answer that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All I'm right. just kidding. You know, right. I, I've been wanting to say that one for a while. Fart worms into your butt. You've been wanting to say that. That's been itching at you. He's been like <laughs> this. Like, oh, I got to get to, how do I make this a bit? I get into the lab and make it really uh, funny. Uh, I like like building it up like it's a real question and then fart worms into my butt. Yeah, but thank he, you. But it, I mean, sometimes we're sitting there and then like he does do, you know, dog bowel things and it's like disgusting and right on me and I'm wondering if I could get any bad things from that. Ugh, disgusting. All right, well, that's the end of housekeeping. We're moving on to cringe of the week. Cringe of the week.
All right, our first story in Cringe of the Week is a transgender inmate who's in jail for murdering a baby is now demanding sex change operations and a lot of other things. Can you, this is Rap Boy's, uh, this is Rap Boy's cook section. Yeah, and uh, a judge already ruled in his favor. So Indiana has to pay for a sex change operation for the convicted baby killer. Here's the lovely lady right there with all the facial tattoos and uh, stuff like that. So uh, big picture though, Obviously, this is crazy, right? This is something that should never exist. Uh, Indiana will be forced to pay for a sex change operation for a trans-identified male prisoner who is serving time for murder of a baby. Indiana Judge Richard Young ruled that Autumn Cordelione, born Jonathan Richardson, was a victim of cruel and unusual punishment when a gender transition surgery was denied, according to the ACLU, which pressed the lawsuit. Yeah. So... This is just a story, and I want to remind you guys, Kamala is, like, pro this. She bragged about fighting for federal inmates to get sex change surgery in California. She wrote on that survey before the CNN uh, presidential primary debates that she was for illegal sex change operation, illegal inmate sex change operation. So she's even worse. But we, we start to look at this, and you see all the players in here. How horrible they are. There's the child murderer. There's the judge who's supposed to uphold the law in America. There's the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union or whatever, mm -hmm. who's supposed to be like fighting for people's rights, but they're just fighting for the trans child killer, right? And there's also doctors who are saying, yeah, this inmate needs this for their mental health. And there's lawyers that are like presenting it to the judge to get it approved. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read a quote here. Denying evidence-based medical care to incarcerated people simply because they are transgender is unconstitutional. We are pleased that the court agreed. Unconstitutional. Unconstitutional. Like, as if this could ever be fathomed in the Founding Fathers' uh, writing of that uh, document, right? And then also, th these are like the same courts that give January Sixers like solitary. Yeah. You know? Um, the prisoner is in jail with a 55-year sentence for murdering an 11-year-old girl. It was his own stepdaughter. 11-month-old girl. 11-month-old. His own stepdaughter in September 2001. Uh, they confessed, um, you know, stuff like that. But then, yeah, like we said, all the players in this, the medical team is another one. Uh, Young, the judge, said, uh, while noting that the convicted killer has been assessed by a medical team, that concurs with the need for surgery. Young said it is therefore medically necessary to alleviate the serious and debilitating symptoms of her gender dysphoria. It is appropriate for the court to order at this time that surgery be provided, right? And here's where it gets crazy. You'd think like, okay, it's just about this transgender surgery. The list of demands from the inmate, the trans face tattoo baby killer, listen to what else they want. In addition to identifying as transgender, Cordelion also identifies as Muslim and has taken separate legal action for being denied a hijab. An entire list of demands Cordelion has made called surgeries to reach my ideal self include a vaginoplasty, breast implants, a brow lift, a brow reduction, a tummy tuck, gluteal implants, a.k.a. a BBL, a uterus transplant, hair removal, and wigs. So this is like, you want a BBL for walking around jail? Full makeover. Yeah, and you're also Muslim. So you're a Muslim trans BBL person. It seems like you're just making it up and you like have, spending time in court because it takes you out of the jail or something for the day. And you're making the judge do stuff and it's all going to be taxpayer funded. And the, the taxpayer is one side and the ACLU is the other side. So, and then you bring in doctors to agree or disagree with you. Just a total, absolute boondoggle waste of everyone's time. And at no point is there an adult in the room going like, nah, this is a child murderer. They can wait for that. They're lucky they don't get the death penalty. Yeah. Which is what should have happened the whole time, right, guys? Yeah. So, crazy story out of, and, you know, once again, we, we used to do this on the, on the show when it's like a trans teacher or a teacher uh, doing gay stuff. It's like, let me check where it is. Indiana, the state that voted 70% for Trump. Uh, you know, Whitewater, Wisconsin, where the Venezuelans are going. Mm -hmm. Springfield, Ohio, where the Haitians are. It's all middle America stuff. And that's where the biggest wins happen, right? The ACLU is fighting hard for that.
Big time. Mm-hmm. Let's get into our next part of cringe. We have a bunch of musicians who are doing like pro Kamala anti American things. Well, it's endorsement season, right? There's like 45 something days to the election. This is when the people who aren't on camera at the Diddy parties are going to say their piece, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's the people who, with the blackmail that are now go- being forced to go do this stuff, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Uh, allegedly. Um, so here's a Macklemore concert from the other night, and then the crowd starts chanting, fuck America. It's hard to hear, but listen to how he replies to that. Straight up, say it. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you. Um, yeah, fuck America. Mm. That's Macklemore, the, the 2014 hit thrift shop singer, right? Yeah. Or whatever year it was. And that's what people liked about him, and now he's doing his political stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you don't like it, you can get out. <laughs> <laughs> Most simple. Uh, but also, uh, remember in that one song, he goes, when I was in third grade, I thought I was gay. When I was in the third grade, I thought I was gay. Pussy. <laughs> Pussy, <laughs> bitch. You're a loser, Macklemore. Yep. And then, uh, so the hating America, we talked about, obviously, abortion before. Like, the current stance of Democrats to fall in line and be progressive enough, you need to hate America, and you need to be pro-choice all the way through birth. Yeah, basically. Which normal people are neither of those things. They're dejected by it. They Normal people don't agree with that at all. And if you even say, like, well, I'm pro-choice, but I believe in restrictions, like, that's not progressive enough, you're out of the camp. Yeah, you'll be henpecked by a a flock of angry middle-aged women, right? Exactly. The view will get you. And then the the, the angry middle-aged women will clear, and then Ben Stiller walks up, and then you're in a fist fight with Ben Stiller, right? Are you saying my daughter can't kill her kids? My daughter's gonna kill. And then he slugs you, and it's like crazy. And then you wake up from the dream, and then it's not even a dream. That's just America, right? Oprah's there, too. And then uh, Haley Williams, which is the band... Paramore. Paramore. Uh, she did a thing at one of her concerts, and we're going to show you like the what she said, and then we're going to also show you an alter- alternate angle where you can see what's really going on. Project 2025 is Donald Trump's playbook for controlling and punishing women, poor people... People of color and the LGBTQ plus community, it is time for all Americans to band together and to finally defeat the Trump agenda. And the only way to do that is by confronting him at the polls. Do you want to live in a dictatorship? Well, show up and vote! Mm. So she says, do you want to live in a dictatorship? which is interesting because the Democrats didn't even have a primary. Mm. They just said, oh, no more Joe Biden. Go vote for the kind of black lady or else Donald Trump. Yeah, that point is lost on her. I don't think uh, Haley Williams cares about that, right? And then if you look from a different angle, you can see that when she's doing this, she's just reading a script. There's some guy in the front row holding up a piece of paper and she's reading the script. Yeah, classic. And uh, she admitted it. She was like, I didn't really read it, but I had it there just in case I forgot. Um, my, fa- <laughs> my favorite is the uh, the thing where it's like, Americans need to unite. Everybody needs to come together to defeat Trump. She ignores that, like, basically it's 50-50 or, like, even more Trump in the polls, right? Um, at least in swing states. Um, she ignores that, and it's like, everybody needs to come together. Americans, we're too divided. And then you just got to come to my side, my exact political beliefs, right? Yeah. It's no one else's fault or like she's not going to change at all or give an inch. It's you, the Trump person, who needs to come over and like totally change your Exactly. We all need to unite with her side, which is also the side of the military industrial complex, the Clintons, the Bushes. Big Pharma, Dick Cheney. (laughs) Big Pharma, Dick Cheney, the Hollywood pedophiles. People who want to kill babies and people who want to flood our country with third worlders. We all got to unite with that side. That group. (laughs) Which is absolutely unhinged. Another thing, too, it's like, obviously, um, anybody musician-wise who does like an overt, like just political statement like that, um, it's very cringe because you're just like using your existing art to like add an addendum You know, Mm. you're just adding like, oh, yeah, here's misery business. And then also this huge political message that has nothing to do with that. Right. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't get famous off of uh, a song about early 19th century 
bourgeois tactics in France, you know? Mm -hmm. That's not what got you famous. Misery business is about like a, a catty girl fight fighting over a guy. And then you add the anti-Trump shit, right? Yeah. It's just so weird, and then it kind of, like, devalues your shit. And whatever, like, her audience is probably 80% like that, or likes her. So mm. it's not that big of a deal, but it's just, like, hijacking your art to do your political thing is, is very weird to That's me, That's a right? good point. Yeah, Ben Stiller, I gotta listen to him, because... Tropic along, Thunder. Along came Polly. Yeah, Tropic Thunder was pretty good, so now his daughter really needs to kill it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, Hamilton... Mm -hmm. You guys know Hamilton. The cast of Hamilton did a song uh, for the upcoming election. And this is what happens when you don't hijack your art. This is when your art is created to be the message, right? Exactly. America decided by ladies who vote, 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 vote. Woo! You could say it's common sense we're voting for. In 2020, women cast 10 million more. You say the loss is destructive. I say it's reproductive. So let my message be instructive. They're bragging yeah. about women voting for 10 million more. Show this to all the young men out there. Show this to the young men in your life and say, are you going to let these uh, civics rapping theater kids beat you at the polls? That would light a fire under me. Me too. Uh, I you hope know, it does. I'm already voting. It doesn't really matter for me. But for those middle of the road people, show these women who are bragging uh, in rap theater form about how they're going to beat you by 10 million at the polls. Exactly. And that's it for our cringe section. Unless yeah. you have anything to add. Well, it's like uh, you want to make fun of Kid Rock or a right-wing MAGA rapper, and then you put out this slop. It's like, all right, penalties offset, replay first down, guys. You're not any better. Big time. Haley Williams, good luck out there. You yeah, know? exactly. All right, let's get into Urban Decay, where it's going to get a little bit worse. Um, our first clip of Urban is, you know, Galaxy Gas. Everyone's doing Galaxy Gas. Whippets, Nitrous. This guy's doing Galaxy Gas while driving, and look what happens. Just drives right into a car, zero reaction, full speed, rear end. Zero reaction, straight into a car because he's sucking galaxy gas while driving. Yeah. And we've kind of talked about insurance on the show, uh, but I don't think we made this specific point. Now is probably a good time to max out your uninsured motorist protection, yes. getting crashed into by someone who's uninsured or illegal or on drugs. Because you'll be left on the hook if you're undercovered for that. And uh, it's, it seems like America is at an all-time high for unlicensed driver drivers, especially if you're in Whitewater, Wisconsin, Springfield, Ohio, you know, like those type of places. And then, you know, the type of guy who would uh, be hitting galaxy gas while he's driving on the highway is the type of guy to let his insurance lapse, you know, yeah. while shopping for new policies, a.k.a. it's been expired since 2018, right? You go, hey, man, do you have insurance? And he just goes, uh, shit, <laughs> what? Uh, and him and his buddies are up to that. Why? What happened? So uninsured motorist, uh, motor vehicle insurance, make sure, I, I don't know, check with your check with your agent or something. Uh it could be like four or five bucks a month, but could save you a huge headache down the line when inevitably an illegal side swipes you after running a red light. Exactly. Let's get to our next clip. Uh, there was a big protest. We talked about this. Was it in Bonus Land or the main show? Main show. Main show. Uh, there was the guy who dodged the fair and then pulled out a knife and said, I'm going to kill you to the cops, then got killed. And then everyone came out and protested. This yeah. is the, that clip. And it's all the same people from the Palestine protests. Yeah. Look at them. They're all wearing the same shit. And this time, they're wearing the same outfits, but they're protesting the fair dodger, who again pulled out a knife and said, I'm going to kill you to a police on the police's body cam. But, you know, th these kids all had this pent up rage. And uh, just because NYU told them you couldn't do the Free Palestine tents anymore, they, they still want to do activities. And it's the same protesters, it's the same protest outfits, and it's the same energy of like oppressor versus oppressed. Yeah. It's like the cops are the oppressors. The the criminal who threatened to kill them with a knife is the oppressed. The Palestinians are the oppressed or, you know, whatever side they're on is always going to be the opposite of like white America. Yeah, for sure. And I think that these people, and I've said this in the show before, I think these protester types are going to team up with illegals mm. because they know if Trump wins or maybe right after Trump wins before he gets into office between like November and January, I think you're going to see these protesters and illegals taking it to the streets. 
and it's going to be get out of city season all over again. Okay, that's fair. Fair prediction. Kind of makes sense. And I think a lot of the illegals, which this is maybe common knowledge, I think a lot of the illegals are straight up mercenaries mm. and are straight up like military aged men here to do not just find a good life and send money home. I think they're here for a specific mission that hasn't really started yet. And then one day they're going to get the call or the memo and they're going to take it to the streets in a way we haven't seen. And it's going to get pretty ugly, unfortunately. Code word, Ronald McDonald, activated. And they're going to go and yeah. then all these uh, protesters are going to be side by side with them. So you don't know who's a stupid college kid and who's a Venezuelan rat. Yeah. And then it's going to get pretty hectic, I think, for white people. That's going to be the target, police, white people, anyone who's up here. You know what? I, I just hope the kid who wrote the I don't care about who comes into this country tweet, I just hope he gets hit pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. If they're going to do Standing it. Standing side by side with yeah. you. And then some Venezuela <laughs> just knocks him out. With a lead pipe. Exactly. And then uh, here's a clip out of Springfield. We had the black Hebrew Israelites. Uh, what's this word for formalizing like this? What? Marching? Marching. Yeah, marching. Yeah. So these are black Hebrew Israelites in Ohio, and they're basically marching in solidarity with the Haitians who are getting a hard time from white people. White people. Yeah. Um, Same theme, though. You know what I'm saying? These guys never do anything. They just show up and march, and then they show, they kind of say, like, hey, we could do something here. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think they ever do, like, there's no community service or, like, end goal. They just march and kind of yell and intimidate and try to recruit other black people to believe we was Jews. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so who knows what happens when everyone gets activated? They could be a arm of some uh, brute force department. True, but I don't think... Uh, the, the good thing we have going for us is a group like that. I don't think they can work with anybody, you know? Yeah. It's very hard to get them on the same page with like Latinos or something. <laughs> so that's a good point. At least we have that going for us. Um, and then we have a Philly takeover. It's kind of street season. It's kind of take to the street season almost. We're yeah. getting close to the election, right? So we got people going crazy. Yeah, there they go. Just chaos in an American city Yep, where the Constitution was signed. Yeah, Liberty Bell, Ben Franklin. Now they got Hellcats doing burnouts and the, <laughs> they don't stop for the police. So like we said, it's get out of city season. Mm -hmm. Get out of the city season big time. All right, moving on to our last piece of Urban Decay. We have uh, EBT updates. We did EBT last week with a guy dancing. We have more dancing EBT uh, receivers, mm -hmm. food stampers. Here, Here they are. go, dancing. When food stamps hit, everyone is a capable person who could have a job. Look at his face he's making. He loves it. That's like, a, that's like more racist than... I, a lot of things. That's a caricature. That's like a minstrel type face, right? And he's doing it while he's getting EBT. Crazy. Not supposed to do that, I thought. Um, and, and we have another group here too, the Hispanics. It's expanding, right? It's not just, uh, and white people get EBT too, and some of them abuse it. But this uh, group, you know, they're happy to do social media of it. You should have shame. You should have some sort of like, ah, I'm uncomfortable doing this, right? Social media is like the opposite of the feelings a person receiving food stamps should have. Exactly. Being, like, posting it and being like excited about it. Exactly. Um, and there was some, because there are illegals getting uh, EBT too. We've heard about the Haitians in Springfield who have EBT cards and stuff like that. And then that's kind of a point that we wanted to make is EBT, right? Like- there's this old version of the American dream where, hey, everyone's going to America from Europe, from Western Europe. Like, it's a new world out there. You can build your own life. There's plenty of opportunity, right? And now that's kind of switched. And it's like, uh, you not ask not what your country can do for you, but what your country can, how much EBT am I getting a month? Yeah. It's basically the thing. Uh, it's completely switched. And migrants are kind of like total leeches these days, right? Um, and this guy tweeted, Republicans like we need to offer them employment opportunities and a shot at the American dream. And they said, this is their American dream. Leeching off the labor of white Americans is all they've ever wanted. You so just see how much you can get. It's a growing attitude amongst like the new generation class of 2024, 2023 migrants. It's just like, what kind of free stuff can I get? And we've covered it with the, the illegal Venezuelan who is telling people how to hack and scam EBT and how to drop an anchor baby and get the most out of uh, the American taxpayer. 
it, you got to realize it's not just some, it's kind of like the new attitude. Yeah. What can I get? And then word spreads amongst the community. Like if 10,000 Venezuelans just came here and they're all in like some localized area, the word spreads about what you can get and everyone hammers it for the max that they can get, right? Big time. There's no shame. There's no dishonor or anything like that. And, and they uh, they honestly see it as like evening the score for past atrocities because like they've drank the Kool-Aid of like America was built on racism and slavery and now's your chance to like get back at Whitey and you can get 3K a month and have kids and live in a free house and get free food. Yeah. It's like the it's like they think that they're entitled to it to make up for the past atrocities. Yeah, so that's the new age American dream. And then not only are people dancing and celebrating and uh, you know doing all that kind of stuff, gloating about how much free EBT they get, but uh, people are even committing crimes. And obviously there's a lot of fraud within EBT. People stay on it too long or uh, other things like that. And we're going to show an example right here of one of those types of fraud. A DHS supervisor and her daughter could face up to 20 years in prison after investigators say the two were part of a SNAP benefit fraud scheme. 12 News reporter Alex Torres Perez joins us live now to go over the allegations. Alex. Well, Kayla and Kim, the DHS supervisor and her daughter are accused of stealing the personal information of hundreds of people to access their SNAP benefits and use them to buy groceries. Surveillance footage from several stores across Rhode Island captured the moments federal investigators believe DHS supervisor Nadine Jean Baptiste and her daughter Octavia Baptiste purposely use others EBT cards to buy their own groceries. The Rhode Island Office of Internal Audit started looking into the matter last year after receiving complaints on their fraud hotline. Investigators uncovered a years-long scheme that could date back as far as 2020. The complaint says Nadine, who's been a DHS principal clerk since 2013, would access SNAP recipients' personal information to check EBT card balances and change the pins in order to use the cards. Records mm, show her daughter on camera, was doing the same. Paper trail, dumbest criminals you've ever seen, doesn't matter to them. They don't care. They're, they're going for it. For free groceries. It's not like you can buy a car like, oh, if I add up all this EBT cash, I can go to get a Lexus. It's just like for $200 at a time, 20 years in jail. I hope they get every every fucking year of it. Me too. too. Wow. So that's that's it. You know, so there, there's multiple things, right? It's like there's scamming the taxpayer by like sandbagging and saying, oh, I don't make enough or keeping your income low enough so that you can stay on benefits. Or cash under the table. And it, Exactly. And then there's scamming the taxpayer. It's like scamming with a wink and then genuine scamming, which is literally just rot raiding the coffers of the EBT system as well, like this woman. Yeah. So it's a double well, whammy. Double whammy indeed. Uh, and then when it comes to who's receiving EBT, uh, there obviously is a discrepancy in how much people pay in versus how much they take out. There was uh, some tweets that sum this all up. The title is Diversity is Expensive. Can you read the tweet that sums up the graph? Uh, if you are a white American over the course of your lifetime, the federal government will, on your behalf, transfer $389,000 of your wealth and income to a single black individual. Over the course of your white lifetime, you contribute $220,000 to the system. A black individual takes $721,000 from the system. Biden Harris shipped 20 million black individuals into your towns and cities. You do the math. So not good. Diversity is expensive. And yeah, this is all about like net taxpayer versus like net uh, benefit recipient. Mm. And it's not good. Right. And uh, exactly. And especially when the conversation now is about like reparations and like how white people owe people of color extra money. It's already happening. It's already happening by a lot to the point where I think we're owed money. Yeah. I think everyone needs to send me a check. Uh, yeah, I think so. All right. Well, don't get too down or too depressed. We're moving on to uplifting gold. And there's some uplifting things that go on in our world simultaneously with all the horrors. Yeah. And the horrors have... that we need to be aware of and voting against and, you know, uh, talking about, right? Yeah. So this one, we showed a few weeks ago the fake punt mm -hmm. where the guy did fake kick and threw it underhand and it ended up being a great play. Uh, we now actually have another punt. This is the worst punt in punt history. He punts it straight up in the air. Then homie just catches it for a touchdown. One yard punt return for a touchdown. It's pretty good. Embarrassing. Pretty bad. Uh, next is a kid or a guy who found a drawing from when he was five years old, and it looks like he um, is living his dream. I found this drawing I did when I was five years old. He 
keys to my dream car. And there he is. He has the dream car. He got it. And then here's his house with the helicopter and his girlfriend. And he has all these things. He accomplished his dreams. Holy shit. Good for him, man. Follow your dreams. He's got the dream car in the driveway and the garage. Six wheels. Smart. Uh, Next is a meme I thought was pretty funny. I forget. Was his Arthur? Arthur, yeah. So it's the episode of Arthur when they're showing a koala bear. And the quote is, the koala like, ain't y'all animals too? That's funny. Yeah. It's uplifting. Yeah, I thought they were all aardvarks and shit. And that guy's a rabbit. The white guy's a rabbit. So, you know. But then they show other animals and it's like, how come you all are talking and I'm stuck like this? Yep. Uh, Next is this guy living the American dream. So, you know, they say American dream's dead. Yeah. And people don't have anything and people have nothing to live for. Not entirely true. Some people are living the dream. He's got a whole rack of uh, slots, and he loves gambling. <laughs> he the guy keeps, loves gambling. And he's playing every single one. <laughs> so that's pretty uplifting. And our final piece of uplifting gold is a tweet from Mytho America on Twitter. Uh, it just says good night and has a picture of, like, a local fair. Yeah. And that used to be called the Gravitron when I was a kid. Is that where you get pinned up against the wall and you're, like, sucked against the wall? And you spin around, yeah. I had a very funny childhood experience on one of those. Where a little girl, like, you know what they say? You're not supposed to put your legs up or something. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to stay in a very specific, it's just like centrifugal force. And then you have to stay in a specific thing and it pins you against the wall. There was a girl who, like, got into a weird position and was, like, crying. And then some other girl was, like, with her, like, as her caretaker and was, like, stay strong. Like, you're going to make it. (laughs) And it was, like, imprinted in my brain when I was a kid. Uh, Hilarious, like. Someone just having the worst night of their life when I'm enjoying myself. So Wow. Well, yeah, I've had a lot of memories on the Gravitron. I've gone on the Gravitron like a hundred times yeah. as a kid. I wouldn't trust it anymore, though, to be yeah, honest. I can't. That time's over, guys. You'd be like uh, Bobby Bacala's daughter get hurt by the carny who put it together because <clears throat> Polly skimped, Polly cut corners. Yeah, it's exactly like that. Yep. And the, the Haitians. Yeah, the Haitians Don't now instead of the, the Italians. Haitians. All right. Well, another Flugus Talks in the books. That was a bad uplifting. We'll make it up to you on Friday. I can add some more uh, EBT stuff. You want me to add a little more? I was Uplifting? Talk- yeah. Well, this is actually not uplifting at all. But but yeah, add it. Add it. I was going to say, so at least there's some substance to uplifting gold instead of the gambling guy, a picture of a roller coaster, uh, a picture of a kid's car, and uh, the worst punt you've ever seen. Just because we we have people here. I was talking to somebody who is telling me about EBT. He works at like a high-end butcher shop. This story. You want me to tell it? Yeah, yeah. He works at like a high-end butcher stop, uh, shop where they do like Wagyu, like nice porterhouses, like high-quality meat, he says. And he says uh, black people a lot of times will come in and like the only thing they say is, y'all take EBT? Like they yell that. And then he kind of has to go, yeah. Uh, and I would tell people, no. I'd just be like, I don't want to deal with you. You don't deserve this. They get like lobster tails, Wagyu, like nice shit on EBT because they're using EBT in a way where they don't really need it. They're not actually feeding six kids. They're scamming the system. You get Wagyu. And you get Wagyu. And he said uh, the other, like meats that like, if you're middle class and struggling, you would never get. That's the thing. Like they stay below and then they get higher stuff where it's like, if you're actually struggling and working hard, you wouldn't get it because it's not a financial decision but when it's free, so it's infuriating. And he was telling me that uh, he had a story the other day of uh, a woman who bought like Wagyu or like really high-end cuts and he walked out with her to help it, uh, help put it in her car and she was like driving a Tesla. So those are the type of people, y'all take EBT and they're just abusing the system. So yeah, I want to absolutely start EBT from the beginning. Pathetic, loser, loser, 0 for 2. Can't even get it. All right. All right. Another Flugus Talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Flugustalks.com for bonus land dropping right now. We have a good bonus land coming today. Um, And then we'll see you Friday unless a hurricane does something really bad. And then there will be just a bonus land on Friday. So more reason to sign up in case Friday gets canceled because of the hurricane. Well, there's also a world where there's no power and there's no bonus land. So maybe bonus land from the dark. There's a world where there's nothing, guys. (laughs) So pray for us. Pray for us. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on Friday.